In a recent video, JF mentioned two genetic data sets. The first one is a recent study by University of Colorado published in Nature's Genetics, listing a few thousand SNPs, or genetic loci, found to be correlated with high educational achievement. The second set is a compilation of 1,000 genomes from 26 populations across the globe. JF suggested analyzing these two sets to see if a general linear correlation model can be derived. This video does just that. First, a few general comments. It's tempting to call the listed SNPs intelligence genes, but let's keep in mind, what they're actually correlated with is educational attainment. There's a correlation between educational achievement and intelligence. But, as we can see in this chart, different fields require different levels of IQ, with STEM fields placing the highest demands on intelligence. Lacking more direct studies at this time, we can use educational attainment only as a rough proxy for intelligence. In Table 2, the Colorado study lists 1,270 SNPs, called lead SNPs. Other tables in the study list more SNPs correlated with various measures of educational achievement. There's a total of about 5,000 SNPs listed in all tables, but many of them are duplicated with a total of about 2,000 unique SNPs listed in all tables. We'll analyze both the 1,270 lead SNPs, and then all 2,000 unique SNPs for a broader picture. As shown in many twin studies in the past, IQ is about 60 to 80 percent genetic past adolescence. That is, 60 to 80 percent of variation in IQ among people is explained by their genes and about 20 to 40 percent by the environment. The intelligence is polygenic, that is, it's a product of many, possibly as many as 2,000 separate genes, each contributing only a tiny fraction to the total effect. To estimate the influence of all relevant SNPs at once, we must construct a generalized linear correlation model. The one used here is a simple additive model. We don't know how the SNPs in the Colorado study interact with each other yet, they could be conditional, multiplicative, etc. At this time, a simple additive model is our best option to get an overall estimate. Here's how the additive model works. For each population, we compute a simple additive polygenic score, according to this formula. E is the effect size of a given allele that is its influence on success in education either positive or negative. For a single SNP, it's a very small number. F is the frequency with which this allele appears within a given population. This score will be computed separately first for the 1,270 lead SNPs, and then for all 2,000 unique SNPs mentioned in the Colorado study. For SNPs duplicated in several studies, We'll take the average of their listed effect sizes, as shown here, to get a better overall estimate. This graph shows the correlation between the polygenic score for 26 populations for the 1,270 lead SNPs. On the y-axis is the average IQ, as published by Lynn and Van Hannen in 2002 and 2006. We observe a strong correlation of 0.76 between the polygenic score and the average IQ. This graph shows the correlation between the polygenic score for all 2,000 unique SNPs in the Colorado study. We observe a very significant correlation of 0.79 between the polygenic score and the average IQ. In this graph, there are two conspicuous outliers at the left end, Gambia and Sierra Leone. Compared to their polygenic scores, Gambia seems quite undervalued in its average IQ score, while Sierra Leone seems quite overvalued. If we remove these two outliers, we get this graph, where the linear correlation rises to a very high 0.82. One interesting aspect is this population cluster. These populations are geographically on, or close to, the Indian subcontinent. At the same time, they all appear undervalued in their average IQ scores. One explanation could be the negative effect of the environmental component of intelligence, like poverty or underdevelopment, compared to their actual genetic potential. 
This is the histogram of the effect size for all 2000 unique SMPs, showing a normal distribution. It's clear from this graph how the study was conducted. The researchers combed through the genome and isolated all SMPs with an observable effect on educational attainment either positive or negative. That is, what's missing in this chart is the central, tall part of the distribution, containing SMPs with no effect on educational attainment, that is, the majority of human genes. Caveats The Colorado study was conducted on a mostly white population. In theory, there may be additional SNPs related to educational attainment that are active in other populations, not captured in this study. The study estimates that the total genetic effect on educational success from these SNPs is about 11%. Again, as mentioned before, the relation between educational attainment and IQ is imperfect. Conclusion Given the three stipulations above, we can say that genetic differences between populations explain about 80% of the genetic influence on educational attainment. JF suggested a control study of 1,000 random SNPs, not linked to educational attainment, to check if the observed correlation is spurious or real. If the person who got the original data from the 1,000 Genomes Project can also obtain the population frequencies for 1,000 other, random, unrelated SNPs, and upload them, please do so, so that the control SNPs can be analyzed. Like all models, this one makes testable predictions, especially at the ends of the spectrum. For example, in the 1000 Genomes database, we have population studies for three separate Chinese subgroups, but we have only a single average IQ for the whole China. This model predicts that future IQ studies of these three Chinese subgroups would yield slightly different average IQ scores, corresponding to the ranking observed here. None of the studies in the 1000 Genomes database includes Hong Kong, Singapore or South Korea. Since Lin and Van Hannan rank Hong Kong, Singapore and South Korea at the top in average IQ, this model predicts that a future genetic study of Hong Kong, Singapore and South Korea will yield very high polygenic scores.